Episode number 35. Jerry took the letter, and, remarking to himself with less internal deference than he made an outward show of, you are a lean old one, too, made his go, informed his son, in passing, of his destination, and went his way. They hanged at Tyburn, in those days, so the street outside Newgate had not obtained one infamous notoriety that has since attached to it. But, the jail was a vile place, in which most kinds of debauchery and villainy were practiced, and where dire diseases were bred, that came into court with the prisoners, and sometimes rushed straight from the dock at my Lord Chief Justice himself, and pulled him off the bench. It had more than once happened, that the judge in the black cap pronounced his own doom as certainly as the prisoners, and even died before him. For the rest, the old bailey was famous as a kind of deadly inn-yard, from which pale travellers set out continually, in carts and coaches, on a violent passage into the other world, traversing some two miles and a half of public street and road, and shaming few good citizens, if any, so powerful is use, and so desirable to be good use in the beginning. It was famous, too, for the pillory, a wise old institution, that inflicted a punishment, of which no one could foresee the extent, also, for the whipping post, another dear old institution, very humanizing, and softening to behold in action, also, for extensive transactions in blood money, Another fragment of ancestral wisdom, systematically leading to the most frightful mercenary crimes that could be committed under heaven. Altogether, the old Bailey, at that date, was a choice illustration of the precept, that, whatever it is right, an aphorism that would be as final as it is lazy, did it not include the troublesome consequence, that nothing that ever was, was wrong making his way through the tainted crowd, dispersed up, and down this hideous scene of action, with the skill of a man accustomed to make his way quietly, the messenger found out the door he sought, and handed in his letter through a trap in it. For, people then paid to see the play at the Old Bailey, just as they paid to see the play in Bedlam, only the former entertainment was much the dearer. Therefore, all the old Bailey doors were well guarded, except, indeed, the social doors by which the criminals got there, and those were always left wide open. After some delay and demur, the door grudgingly turned on its hinges a very little way, and allowed Mr. Jerry Cruncher to squeeze himself into court. What's on? He asked, in a whisper of the man he found himself next to. Nothing yet. What's coming on? The treason case. The quartering one, eh? Ah. Returned the man, with a relish. He'll be drawn on a hurdle to be half hanged, and then he'll be taken down and sliced before his own face and then his inside will be taken out, and burnt while he looks on, and then his head will be chopped off, and he'll be cut into quarters. That's the sentence. If he's found guilty, you mean to say? Jerry added, by way of proviso.